Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Cooler Master has a brand new redesigned third generation dual chamber AIO cooler, the ML240 LV2. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it in an AMD AIM-4 based system. Now, this video is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a review because every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement, and every setup is just different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for your new PC builds. With all that said, let's get into it. This guide was designed to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Cooler Master ML240 LV2 on an AMD AIM4 based motherboard. Now, this cooler does not support Threadripper. We also have an Intel version of this coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. It's going to release in the next week or so. And make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because chances are I'm going to answer all of those inevitable questions in this video anyway. So let's start off by answering some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Ryzen 3 3300X. Now, these parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. Uh, this video is not a discussion about pricing or performance or the reasons as to why I picked these parts. They were the ones available and that's why I used them. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances in your case. Yes, this cooler has RGB fans and no, they are not addressable. No, your motherboard does not require RGB to use this cooler. Yes, you could put whatever fans you want on this cooler, absolutely anything you like. It's completely up to you. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box. Yes, it will work with almost every single AMD, AM4 base, motherboard and CPU combo you're going to ask about in the comments from the launch of Ryzen up until the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion. Yes, the thermal paste is included. No, you do not need to use the included controller for lighting. You can use your motherboard's own 12 volt RGB header if you like, if it has one. If not, use the included controller. No, you don't have to fill up the cooler or top it up or maintain it at all. You literally don't have to do anything. Okay. Let's see what's in the box and how to install it. All right, ladies and gents, let's check out what's in the box in the Master Liquid ML240 LV2 RGB from Cooler Master. First off, we've got two of these brand new RGB sickle flow fans. They are not ARGB, they are only RGB. So you'll need a 12 volt RGB header to use these. Next up, we've got the installation guide. Now, <laughs> here's the funny thing about the installation guide. Guess what? We're not gonna be using it at all, so yeah. Chuck that away. Next up, we've got the warranty information. Now this is actually pretty handy in case anything happens to the cooler or anything's not quite right with it when you get it. So yeah, make sure you uh, keep this handy for future reference. Here's all the mounting gear. We're gonna take a quick look at all of this stuff really quickly. This is for Intel and AMD based installations, but yeah, let's just take a quick look at what's in the bag. First off, we've got Yes, obviously the bag with all of the things inside of it. Inside that bag, there's the AIM4 mounting brackets. Now this is what we will be using for the installation in this guide. There's also a bag of screws for the fans. This is also to mount the radiator in a different type of configuration. There's also this bag, which actually has all of the Intel mounting hardware and a few other little bits that we will be using in this guide as well. There's also this little RGB controller. This is a nice little inline RGB controller that you can use for other RGB products as well. There's also a tube of Master Gel Pro from Cooler Master. That's pretty good thermal paste, not gonna lie about that. There's also a three-way RGB splitter. This can only be used for RGB, not ARGB. There's a two-way PWM fan splitter as well. And we'll quickly take a look at that brand new cooler from Cooler Master, the ML240LV2. You'll notice that the radiator is slightly different from their older coolers. It's got a new finish and the pump top is completely redesigned. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the things we're gonna need for this installation. You're going to need two of the AIM4 mounting brackets for the pump top. You'll need at least eight bolts, and this is for this installation in particular, 
and four screws to mount those brackets to the bottom of the pump top. So let's get into it. Locate four of these screws, both of the AM4 mounting brackets. Now it's a great time to mention that we need to visit our friends over at Peel Corp and peel the sticker off the bottom of the cold plate of the cooler so there is no interruption in that thermal interfacing. Make sure you do this, otherwise, yeah, you've got bigger problems. Uh, what I would recommend doing is also loosening the thumb nuts. Yes, they're thumb nuts from the brackets themselves. And you'll notice there is this little locating notch on the pump top itself. And what you want to do is take a look at the bracket. There's also a locating notch on that bracket as well. What we're going to do is line those up on the top side of the pump top. We're going to put a screw from the cold plate side through those holes and fasten them so the bracket is now fastened to the cooler. And I'm gonna do that process again on each of the corners. And then what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you this from a slightly different angle as well so you can get a bit of an idea of how this goes on. It's all very straightforward. Even for first time builders, this shouldn't be too complicated. And if everything went to plan, it should look a little something like this. We'll take another look at it as well. So you can see that it actually goes on top of the bits that come out of the side of the water block itself. And the reason why I'm showing this again is just so you can clarify that you've mounted this in the correct way. And again, we'll just take another look from a different angle and it should look something like this. Okay, let's move on. Let's locate eight of these bolts. And what we're going to do is actually use these bolts and place them through the holes on the fans for mounting. We're gonna mount the radiator first. You can do this in a different order. It's completely up to you, but this is the way I would recommend doing it in a case like this. So put the radiator on the inside of the case with the screw that you've already passed through the fan and tighten one corner. Now the way I like to do this is actually doing opposing corners so it actually has some mounting pressure and the radiator is actually aligned correctly and you want to rinse and repeat that process with the second fan just so it's all held into place. Then locate the rest of the bolts and what you can do is go ahead and tighten the rest of them. Now you don't actually need to use a screwdriver for these bolts. You can finger tighten them up all the way and it should have more than enough mounting pressure for the radiator. I locate both the power and the RGB cables from the fans and I would recommend passing this through to the back for easier cable management and for insulation a little bit later. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Now what we're going to do is apply thermal paste to the IHS on the top of the CPU itself. Now this is up for debate. This is the way I would recommend applying thermal paste to a Ryzen CPU. All you need to do is apply a P dot amount in the center of the IHS, just as I'm showing right here. This is the way that I actually would recommend doing it. It, there is lots of debates on whether this is not the right way, but this is the way that works all the time. Now, get one of the AM4 brackets, and you'll notice I'm using the stock mounting hardware that will come on the motherboard out of the box, and I like to clip in one side and slowly lower it down onto the top of the IHS. And you can see it clipped in just like this. What you want to do is also then clip on the other side, which is, uh, it can be tricky. It will take a couple of goes, but it shouldn't be too hard. And once you've done that, slowly tighten each side. Don't do it up all the way. Just alternate for with a few turns on each side just to get that mounting pressure nice and tight. And you'll notice that once you start doing this, the bolts will actually get to a point where they won't turn anymore. And that's how you know you've got the perfect amount of mounting pressure. You'll notice there's two cables that come off the top of the pump top for this cooler. We're gonna show you what to do with them now. I would recommend getting the RGB cable first, which looks a little something like this, and then passing that through to the back side of the case for easy cable management a little bit later on the guide. Now this cable is to actually power the pump, not to light it up, to make it actually pump the fluid through. Locate a CPU opt header. It might be labeled something slightly differently on your motherboard for, for Gigabyte motherboards and some ASRock boards it's labeled like this. It might be water pump or whatnot. And plug that into that header. You'll notice there's be one exposed pin, don't worry. You're not doing the wrong thing, you're good to go. What we're gonna do is plug in the two-way PWM fan splitter as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. Locate this end of the cable, and you'll wanna do almost the same thing as the last step, locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard, and what you wanna do is then 
plug that end straight into that header, then pass that cable also through to the back side of the case for easy cable management. And now we're going to show you how to power the fans. Locate the PWM fan connectors that we passed through a little bit earlier in the guide and the cable that we just passed through from the CPU fan header. And it's as simple as just plugging in those cables and you should be good to go. It's very, very easy. I'm gonna show you two ways how to connect the RGB, but this is the common step between both of those ways. So try not to get confused. I'll try to make this as easy as possible. You'll need this three-way RGB splitter. Locate the RGB cable from either the fan or the pump top. It doesn't matter. As long as all three of these are plugged in, it should be pretty straightforward. And plug them into the splitter. And you'll notice that both of these arrows are aligned. And this means you've plugged it in the correct way. And what you'll want to do then is rinse it and repeat this process for the other fan or the pump top or whatever, making sure all three RGB cables are plugged in and making sure those arrows are aligned so we can move on to the next step. You may have been going through the box and wondering what these weird plastic things are for. Now these are actually to hold the cables into place and more specifically the RGB cables. They're very easy to use. All you need to do is basically do exactly as I'm showing. Put them over the top of the cables and once you push the cables into the little holder you can pull the cables as hard as you like and they won't become unplugged and I really like these. Now I'm going to show you the first way to do RGB. Now this might be the most uncommon way to do it however because it has an RGB controller in the box this is the way that you would connect the RGB controller. What you need to do is locate that RGB controller. What we're going to do is then go ahead and locate the four-way pins that come in the box as well, plug it into the end of the cable, plug it straight into the RGB controller, making sure both of those arrows are also aligned, getting the Molex power connector. Yes, I know it's Molex, but I'm sure not many people will use this. Uh, plug the power cable into the bottom of the controller and then locate a Molex power cable from your power supply and you want to just plug that in and you should be good to go and if this is the way you're going to use it the guide is now complete but the way I'd recommend using RGB is getting this end of the RGB cable passing it through to the front side of your motherboard locating a 12 volt RGB header on your motherboard and plugging it straight in that way you can control it and sync it with any other RGB products in your system and if you had a little bit of luck it should look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord server or drop a comment down below and make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone would most likely answer your question already. And please take that into consideration before asking any questions in the comment section. And I only say that because I just don't want you to waste your time asking questions that someone's already answered or that can be answered in our Tech Help Discord server. And if you like this video and you want to help support the channel, uh, consider hitting the like button. We've got like the join button if you want to become part of our community. You can get early access to videos like this one over on Floatplane. And yeah, if you didn't like the video, you can hit that dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And yeah, it's, it's nice to see that they refreshed this cooler. It's looking pretty good. What do you reckon of the new pump top? It's pretty cool, right? It's good. It's nice and minimal. I dig it. Thanks for watching.